the base level was just that she wasn't good enough and like unloved. And so that was just like. Hi, I'm Pablo Larraín. Hey, I'm Kristen Stewart, and we are going to break down a new scene. From our movie, Spencer. Yesterday, you arrived after the Queen. I got lost. Well, it's a very important scene, for sure, because it's, it's, uh, the movie has, is told in three days, and it's the beginning of the second day, and it's actually the only real face-to-face -face interaction that Diana has with Charles in the movie. And it was uh, nearly eight or nine pages long, <laughs> a lot of dialogue. Mm. And it's, it happens at, at a point where what I think is very beautiful is that they don't, they, they're not really talking what it's actually happened. Uh, and they're just going sad, sideways to, to the heart of the problem, which is, it's a breakup scene, um, but they talk about something else. We keep trying to sort of get the upper hand on each other and by changing the subject. Um, and then he ultimately, I mean, and maybe this is just my perspective, <laughs> but um, he does, get, he gets the upper hand. And, and I start answering these questions, whereas she comes in going, I'm just gonna make statements, I'm just gonna make statements. So, yeah. Why would you get lost? You've lived over the hill for years. It looks different now. Everything looks different. It's a three-tone, huge snooker table. It's very English, <laughs> and, and we couldn't find one in Germany when we showed it, so we brought one from England. And snooker tables are usually green, and I, with Guy Hendricks, our production designer, <clears throat> we wanted to have it red, which is one of the main colors, if not the main color of the movie. So it was, it, it was not easy to, to do it, but it's very symbolic as well, and also because of the positions of the balls that are in the table, and because of the physicality of the room, having each of them on one side of the tool felt like a game, and at the same time like a battle. It creates a, a, a huge amount of distance. They're really far from each other, mm. and you can feel that. You sure you went late yesterday because you were delayed by someone? It's a library. It's inside of a castle that today it's a hotel. And what we did is that we just did some work in it, but it's an original building that is actually in Germany. So I don't think it's actually not even similar to the one that is in Sandigram. Why would you think I got delayed by someone? Oh, come on, come on. It, it was written like that, every beat of the, those guns were in the script and we just had someone on, on, the, on the set doing this and Christine was reacting to that. They are circling us, didn't you know? Don't you read? It seems they're circling just me. Not you, just me. I'm so interested in actors that really bear themselves and feel entirely themselves all the time and can't hide in, in roles. I'm convinced by actors that really just want to be like present in every moment and um, I've, I've heard other actors kind of present the idea of playing two people or just having a sort of protective wall of character that you bring to interviews or a public persona. I just think that that's like literally the opposite of what I'm trying to do. So I don't want to get closer to, I want to become closer to my work and other people and all of that and so like absolutely not and I think that that was all something that Diana struggled with as well is that she wanted and craved proximity and honesty and emotional connection and she was sort of begged not to ever do that and you know to perpetuate a lie and, and, and uphold an ideal that you kind of see through is painful. It's like, uh, you know, you can't live your whole life like that. We only know we have one shot at this for sure. It's like to spend your whole life living a lie is just something that I don't know. I don't know how anyone does that. The thing is, Diana, there has to be two of you. You know, there's, there's two of me, there's two of father, two of everyone. There's the real one and the one they take pictures of. You have to be able to make your body do things you hate. That you hate. He says there's you have to be two of you. And then he says that one of those two has to do things that your body hates. 
and that's where the scene really is. And, and I love what you do after when you say that you hate. That, how you sort of absorbed the, the impact of, of, of that idea, it's very, very interesting. And I think and that- And I think it's also calling him out because he says like, yeah. you have to do things, you have to, you have, he's trying to help her. You have to make your body do things that you hate. I'm like, that you hate. Why don't you just say the truth and tell me hate me <laughs> like just say it and, but it's yeah. also it's also your son outside shooting a gun that you think that he hates that yeah so it's it's related to it's, it's related to doing things that you don't want to do and you are just trapped in the wheel of history and tradition so you're never yourself you're always someone else and that is a very interesting and complicated conflict i think yes For the good of the country. For the country. Yes, the people. Because they don't want us to be people. It was day three. And oh, yeah, they, because Jack was like only just gotten. Yeah, day, yeah. Day one, it, it was more physical. Day two is the entrance of the house. Yeah, with, you, with, with Tim. Yeah. And then day three was this massive scene, and we shot it in one day. And we covered it a lot, mm -hmm. and we just used the white lenses on each. So it, it felt more, more cold, and at the same time, more, more in his perspective. But it was, it was at the beginning of the shooting, it was not easy. Yeah, somebody asked me the other day what the, first, um, what the first day was like, and when did you feel like you really got into her, and you felt like she was something you understood physically, emotionally, that you could wear her. And uh, it's the, fr the first scene with Tim and I, really broke me in completely. Because the first day we had no dialogue and we just inhabited the space and kind of walked around and, and did some wordless stuff. And mm -hmm. second day was with the kids, with Tim. It was like in a very large space. It was not intimate. It was a, it was a performance. It was very much from the outside. And then I don't remember that uh, scene between Charles and I being something that felt daunting. I was so in that could have been halfway through the movie. I felt like we were halfway through the movie. I had also been running that scene with my dialect coach for yeah, months. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm sorry, I thought you... I didn't think about this when we were there, but it's like he's saying, will you please just play the game? It's yeah. easy if you just play the game, just do the lie, just just go with it, and it's he says drops it. the ball. Yeah, I know, Fo I know. Follows the rules. Yeah, you know, wear the dresses in the order that is written. It almost feels like a pleading as well. You have, I feel bad for him in that scene a lot. I mean, you know, Jack, who play, Jack Farthing, who who plays Charles, did it in a way that was incredibly human and and and, and to me like inviting in in, in in a kind of ironic way. There are certain times where I know exactly what a scene is about and what it's trying to say, and then there are times where you sort of, it, where it kind of changes. Um, I think from my perspective right now, having done the scene a million times, watched it come together, had some time between myself and the experience of actually doing it, I think when I turned and dropped the ball, they, Charles and Diana did miss each other a lot. I know that that sounds, how would I know that? There, it, it just energetically that seems like they both tried in different times to sort of close the distance between them. And that is speculative and maybe hopeful on my end. And I, you know, I, I love her as a sort of figure and as a person that I've oddly become spookily close to. So I felt like it was almost like, just as his back is turned, she she offers the thing back, do you know what I mean? If, but there's just no, there's no way to play this game. We, we can't play this together. But it's not for lack of trying or wanting. Um, if, if they were compatible and meant for each other, that would have been really convenient and fun for them. They just weren't. Um, and that was really forever painful for her. That rejection is simple as that is and, and as complicated as her, as her life is and, and how involved her sort of pain is in, in many different aspects, the base level was just that she wasn't good enough and like unloved. And so that was just like, I guess we should stop trying. And, and it's, I think it's the gesture. Yeah, well. I'm it's trying, how, I know. How you drop it, it's like, yeah. it's just, it, it, because I, 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 I would have given it. you everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. 
that's what I mean. It's a breakup scene, and that ball kind of, it's a, you know, it just shows and symbolizes that. Game's over. That's it. Yeah. Fight them. You are your own weapon. Check out our movie Spencer in theaters now.